see this. This is what you want the bottom of your boat, bottom of your kayak to look like after a good day of toad fishing. <laughs> Just hammering them. Each of these toads has probably got three or four fish on it. Super fun day. As you can see, sneaking through some snaky stuff. And it's really fun this time of year when water temps are warmer in the shallows, concentrating bass. And so what I'm hoping, and I don't necessarily see it right now, is that the lily pads would be a little more, you know, decaying, dying a little bit more than they are right now. But the good news is the water is up. So that makes the lily pads a little easier to work with. And uh, I'm excited because it's calm today. So I'm gonna throw a top water. I'm gonna throw a buzz toad. It's a loud bait that you can work in pockets. And one of my favorite things about it versus a traditional hollow body frog is the fact that you can sink it. So you come into a pocket and then if you got a fish hot on you that isn't committing, you just sink it in front of its face and that's when they'll usually smash it. What I like about these is it's a dense plastic. So it's heavier so I can cast it farther, but it also doesn't get torn up too fast especially by the hook. This is a heavy duty wide gap hook, so it's making a pretty good hole in this plastic. But like I said, it's heavy so I can, oh, really? Oh, a little guy, but come on. Oh, stay pinned. There we go. Just like that. See the hook down the gullet there? I mean, seriously, that is deep penetration right there. I'm gonna back up so I don't get sucked into the weeds here. Let's see if I can get that hook out. Man, that thing didn't hit it super aggressively, but nice fish. As you can see on the Toad Hook Texas rig. So pretty weedless, and it's almost easier to get hook in them sometimes when you don't have two hooks when you're frog fishing you really gotta bear down on them use a heavier rod to penetrate the roof of the fish's mouth and here i'm just using a seven foot medium heavy so i can impart a little bit more action on the frog i can cast a little more accurate and i don't have to just bare bones set the hook on them easily get rigged back up throw her out there i'm keeping my tip high so I don't get wrapped around lily pads. And as you can see, I'm just kind of steering the toad around. One other thing that I love about, oh, it was a little one. What I love about sparse pads, two things, is that, like I said, you can fish through them clean. And I got the pedal system in the kayak here. So if I do get drug in by a fish, I'm not fighting it too bad to get out of there. So like I said, I'm using a medium heavy as opposed to a heavy rod today. Paired with this toad, a little bit lighter rod. Heavy rod's not necessary. But what is necessary, and like I've said before, fishing in a kayak is a fast gear ratio reel. I am using an eight one to one. And so when I hook a fish, I can get them on the surface quick. That's really important because if he dives down, it's got time to dive down. Obviously, he's going to get tangled up in the lily pad stems. So fast reel. I got 40 pound braid on here. Not the 65 pound you typically fish in a hollow body frog. So a little bit lighter gear. So right now it's fun because bass have been out deep a lot of the summer. And now it's just like a magnet into the shallows. So you can have a high numbers day. I mean, you're moving fish, you're getting blow ups, you're missing fish, you're catching fish, but they really concentrate in the shallows. Another thing about this time of year is that you have a frog migration. Lots of frog species winter in the lake bottom in the mud up shallow. So if you've ever walked around on ice and seen frogs just below the ice, those are the ones that didn't quite make it into the mud in time. For hibernation but what does that mean that means all the frogs that are in the woods in the wetlands start pouring into the lakes 
So there's, you know, a rise in the number of frogs in the lakes. The fish are up shallow. Only means one thing. Bass are going to be eating frogs. So just fishing a frog imitator. And I'll fish a hollow body frog a lot too. But this is just fun. It's just different, like I said. And, and especially since, you know, frogs, hollow body frogs are maybe a little bit more popular. So you throw this, makes a lot more noise. Sinks, does some different things. That can get those pressured fish to eat where they normally wouldn't. Jeez. Oh, he popped up. Kidding me. Mm. There we go. That one's got a little better body on it. Just like that. Ooh, he's fat. A lot fatter than the other ones I've been catching. Pretty awesome. Suck into this bay. I just saw a reed move. Giant. I'm going in after him. I'm going in. I just saw that reed move. I just saw that reed move. Whew. That reed moved. I cast it right at it. <laughs> and it just came flying in. So like I said, later in the year, keep an eye on the lily pads because when they die off, that presents a lot of opportunity to fish baits cleanly through them. And if you're on a little backwoods lake like this, you can get a kayak in and out of them way easier than you can get almost anything else. So it's a fun thing to do in the fall. A little toad in the pads.